Welcome to a journey back in time to the golden age of ancient Greece. In this episode, we delve into the extraordinary lives and accomplishments of some of the greatest athletes the world has ever seen. From unbeatable boxers to legendary runners and heroic fighters. If that sounds good to you, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more historical content in the future. Meet Theagenes of Thassos, or Theagenes or Thasios, the undefeated pugilist. Theagenes of Thassos, a towering figure in the ancient Olympics, born to a humble family, Theagenes displayed exceptional physical prowess even as a child. At the age of nine, he astounded the people of Thassos by carrying a bronze statue of a god from the Agora to his home and back again. As he grew older, Theagenes' talent in athletics flourished. He became renowned for his victories at the Olympian, Pythian, Nemean, and Isthmian Games. The pinnacle of his career came at the Olympics of 480 and 476 BC, where he achieved a historic milestone. He became the first athlete to win the wreath in both boxing and pankration, an ancient form of mixed martial arts. But Theagenes' legend didn't end with his mortal life. According to a local myth, a man who never won a match against Theagenes came every night to the statue and beat it. One night the statue came loose and fell on the angry opponent and killed him. His sons prosecuted the statue for murder, which was a perfectly reasonable action under Greek law. The Greeks felt that all murders must be punished, whether or not the murder was a person, animal, or even an object. The people of Thassos dropped the guilty statue of Theagenes into the ocean, presumably settling the matter. Then, some years later, a plague struck the island, and the people sought advice from the oracle, who told the islanders they need to welcome back all exiles. The people of Thassos followed this command, and some fishermen retrieved the statue of the athlete, and repositioned the statue back in its original place, and from then on, sacrificed to him as a healing god. Leonidas of Rhodes, a runner whose athletic prowess was nothing short of awe-inspiring, Born in 188 BC, Leonidas won four consecutive Olympiads from 164 to 152, and he was a champion of three foot races. He was hailed with the title Triastes, the Tripler. Leonidas is acclaimed by some to be one of the greatest sprinters of all time. What set Leonidas apart was his incredible versatility. He dominated races like the Stadion, while also displaying immense strength and endurance in the Hiplitodromos foot race performed with bronze armor and shield. His triumphs were so exceptional that the Athenian philosopher Philostratos once praised him, stating that Leonidas rendered all previous theories of runners' training and body types obsolete. He left a lasting impression on the annals of history as one of the greatest sprinters of all time. The Agoras of Rhodes, a champion boxer whose legacy extended beyond his personal achievements. His fame began in 464 BC when he won the Olympic crown. This triumph was immortalized by the esteemed lyric poet Pindar. Yet it was the Agoras lineage that truly cemented his status as a sporting legend. His three sons, all of whom were exceptional athletes, continued his legacy. During the 448 BC Olympics, the Agora's sons, Damagetus and Acusileus, achieved an unparalleled feat. They both won the boxing and pankration events, a historic double victory for the family. When the brothers returned home, they celebrated their father's achievements by carrying the Agoras through the arena on their shoulders. His youngest son, Doreus, was even more successful than his brothers. The name of the Agoras of Rhodes became synonymous with victory and honor, a symbol of a sporting dynasty. Although we have no exact record of his career, it is clear the Agoras was a legend in his own time. Arichion of Figalia, the most famous of all Pancratiasts and a true hero of ancient Greece. The champion fighter secured victories at the 52nd and 53rd Olympiads held in 572 and 568 BC respectively. Pankration was a martial art blending boxing and wrestling, as well as incorporating submissions, arm locks, and chokeholds on the ground, making it very similar to modern MMA. This was Arichion's domain. His final bout at the 564 BC Olympics turned into a legendary tale of sacrifice and triumph. In the midst of a chokehold, Arichion dislocated his opponent's toe. Although victorious, 
he succumbed to the chokehold only moments before the fight's conclusion. Recognizing the valor of Arichion, they proclaimed him Pankration champion for a third consecutive time. Arichion's fatal fight was described by the geographer Posineus. He says, quote, For when he was contending for the wild olive with the last remaining competitor, whoever he was, the latter got a grip first, and held Arichion hugging him with his legs, and at the same time he squeezed his neck with his hands. Arikion dislocated his opponent's toe, but expired owing to suffocation. But he who suffocated Arikion was forced to give in at the same time. Because of the pain in his toe, the Eleans crowned and proclaimed victor the corpse of Arikion." End quote. His statue at Figalia became the focus of a hero cult and was believed to possess healing properties, a testament to the respect and admiration he earned through his bravery. Milon of Croton, the unstoppable wrestler. This legendary wrestler's feats of strength were nothing short of awe-inspiring. He was most likely a historical person, as he is mentioned by many classical authors, among them Aristotle, Posineus, Cicero, Herodotus, and more, but there are many legendary stories surrounding him. Milan's unparalleled strength and incredible appetite for food became the stuff of legend. He was born in the Greek colony of Croton in Magna Graecia, modern-day Italy. He was a six-time Olympic victor, once for boys wrestling in 540 BC at the 60th Olympiad, and five-time wrestling champion at the 62nd through 66th Olympiads. Milon kept on competing even well after what would have been considered a normal Olympic athlete's prime. By the 62nd Olympiad, he would have been over 40 years of age. Milon's strength and courage extended beyond the arena. Diodorus Siculus wrote in his history that Milon was a follower of Pythagoras, and also that he commanded the Crotonian army, which defeated the Sybarites in 511 BC, while wearing his Olympic wreaths and dressed like Heracles in a lion's skin and carrying a club. Ancient sources and legends report that he took great pleasure in showing off his strength. He had a number of feats he would perform, such as holding his arm out with fingers outstretched and challenging people to attempt to bend his little finger. He would also stand on a greased iron disc and challenge people to push him off it. He would hold a pomegranate in one hand and challenge others to take it from him. Nobody ever could, and despite him holding the fruit very tightly, it was never damaged. He would train in the off years by carrying a newborn calf on his back every day until the Olympics took place. By the time the events were coming around, he was carrying a four-year-old cow the length of the stadium, then proceeded to kill roast and eat it. Legend has it that these feats led to his eventual downfall. His final test of strength came when he was traveling the countryside and met a villager trying to split a stump with a hammer and wedges. Milon excitedly asked the man if he could attempt to split the wood with his strength, not using any tools at all. The villager, honored by Milon's offer, went off to fetch food while Milon worked. Milon immediately tried to pull the stump apart by inserting his fingers in the crack. As he pulled the stump open, the wedges fell out, trapping Milon's fingers. Without the wedges there to hold the crack open, he could not free his fingers from the stump. There, he waited for the villager to return with food, but legend has it that Milan met his end when wolves or a lion took advantage and mauled him to death. Thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more videos like this one.